ladies and gentlemen, I haven't done many videos on the Laquan McDonald case, trying to hold back. And the reason why I was holding back, because on too many occasions, we have seen these cops walk and it gets frustrating after a while. Um, I have been really following it through True Royal and she's done a great job on her videos. If you haven't seen them, get over there to her channel and watch them. Jason Van Dyke has been, you know, boohooing all up in the courts and everything. And in all honesty, I think this man is a fraud. I think he is playing it up to the cameras in the courtroom because he will do anything he thinks that will work in getting him off in this case. What he did was vicious. Laquan could not have been a threat to him because he was walking away. How can somebody with some teeny knife walking around is such a threat that you got to pump 16 bullets into them? This man is a killer just like we have seen many other killer cops go into the courtroom and walk out and go on and live life like they've done nothing wrong. No matter what you thought about Laquan McDonald, he was only 17 years old and he had a very troubled life. Even if he had to shoot him, why 16 times? How do you justify that? He was still shooting Laquan when he was down on the ground. Only a heartless demon would do such a thing. I don't care about this man's tears on the stand. I really don't. I was not moved by his fake tear performance at all. This is the normal kind of cop in America. This is the kind of man they want on police forces around America, a heartless devil that cares about no one in our community at all. On the job just to kill and harm us. No other real reason for being there. When he shot Laquan McDonald that night, he went way too far. He went overboard and tried to reload after unleashing 16 bullets when he was walking away. I have a video that I want you to listen to, ladies and gentlemen. Good afternoon. Right now, the judge is giving the jury instructions before they go into deliberations. Now, one instruction that they are getting is that they consider convicting on a less severe charge than first degree murder, that charge being second degree murder. But prior to that, attorneys for both sides tried to argue their case once again on whether to convict or quit Jason Van Dyke. Why did Jason Van Dyke ignore each and every one of those signals? of avoidance, maybe because he was intent on shooting Laquan even before he arrived. You now know that Jason Van Dyke was already asking why someone didn't shoot Laquan McDonald before he even arrived on the scene, before he made any attempt to assess the situation himself. He made the decision to shoot as soon as he heard Laquan was defying the orders to stop and drop the knife. Laquan McDonald is confronted. What happens? He attacks. He's confronted by Rudy Grillis. What happened? He attacked. He's confronted by the, the police officers here. He attacks. Thankfully, he didn't harm the police officer. 
the attacks. Threat level is rising each and every time as Jason Van Dyke gets to the scene. Now, deliberations will begin after the jury gets instructions from the judge. Now, during closing arguments, the state played the video once again for the jury and once again portrayed Van Dyke as a cop who fired within seconds of exiting his squad car when 17-year-old Daquan McDonald was walking away from the officer and wasn't threatening anyone in October of 2014, repeating over and over again he was shot 16 times. Not one of the shots, the state said, was justified. They say Van Dyke ignored signs that McDonald was trying to avoid police. They also pointed out inconsistencies in Van Dyke's story. The defense tried to humanize Van Dyke, telling the jury their decision will not only have an impact on him, but his family and continue to portray McDonald as a dangerous teen high on PCP with a knife who needed to be stopped. His attorney called what happened a tragedy, not murder, and that the video does not show what Van Dyke or his partner Joe Walsh saw that night. Van Dyke's attorney reminded the jury that Walsh believed the teen was a threat, believed Van Dyke did what he had to do in that situation, and that Van Dyke didn't have time to wait for a taser. What will happen after the verdict, regardless of what it is, is also being talked about here at the courthouse. We have plans. Uh, if the verdict is uh, not guilty, we're going to uh, the city hall uh, one hour after we hear the verdict. If the verdict is guilty, we're going to the city hall one hour after we hear the verdict. And the reason why we're now, another thing we are expecting to learn here very shortly is whether or not this jury will be sequestered in this case. That will be up to the judge. I did speak with a legal expert yesterday who told me that he would be shocked if this jury was not sequestered just because this case is such a high profile one. We're live at the Cook County Criminal Courthouse. I'm Eric Brown, WGN News. What was the plan McDonald doing? Advancing on me. And could you see him, his face? Yeah, I could. I won't what, if anything, it. did you notice about his face? His face had no expression. His eyes were just bugging out of his head. He had just these huge white eyes just staring right through me. And did you say anything to the one I was yelling at him, drop the knife. I yelled, I don't know how many times, but that's <laughs> all, I, all I yelled. And did he keep advancing toward you? He never stopped. How close did he get to you? He got probably about 10 to 15 feet away from me. When he got 10 to 15 feet away from you, what did he do? We never lost eye contact. Um, guys were bugging out. His face was just expressionless. And he turned his torso towards me. And what if he had to do with his arm? He waved the knife from his lower right side upwards across his body. Where's my left shoulder? And when he did that, what did you do, Austin? I shot him. All right, ladies and gentlemen. You know, you know what I find fascinating? These cops are not afraid of a high Caucasian that may have a weapon. They seem to be able to defuse the situation. But if a black male is high, all of a sudden they are petrified. You ever see them petrified of any other junkie out here? I never do. In fact, they gladly help them. And many of these junkies have put people's lives in danger, driving cars, that are literally weapons. And I've showed you those videos. They don't kill those junkies. And they cause more fatalities now out here than people drunk on alcohol. 
But that video shows Laquan McDonald walking away. And you know what his description of Laquan reminds me of? Darren Wilson's description of Mike Brown. That's what it put me in, put in my mind when he was describing him, talking about his eyes were bugging out. Please tell me what you think, ladies and gentlemen. Please leave your comment and subscribe. Don't forget to hit on the notification and I'll see you on the next video. Peace, family.